This is how you fight a boss in Halo Infinite. And this is how you fight a boss in Doom Eternal. And this is how you fight a boss in Hogwarts Legacy. And now, this is how you fight a boss in Metal Gear Solid 3. End. See any difference? Metal Gear Solid 3. Just uttering those three words and one number can invoke varying levels of emotions. Nostalgia, sadness, and... Released in 2004 on the PlayStation 2, the game, just like its predecessors, pushed video games to a whole new level. With a gripping and engaging story, highly interactive gameplay set in a linear sandbox environment, and a Metal Gear load of gratuitous shots, Metal Gear Solid 3, for many of the people that have played it, serves as a shining example of how player agency in games should be handled. Now, let's go back a bit. Remember that clip that I had in the intro? This right here is the end. A boss that players fight near the midpoint of the game. A fight where the player has to be on pins and needles, sneaking around the jungle while the old man from Happy Wheels takes pot shots at them. It's usually a long fight, but the player can skip it entirely. Way before you're even supposed to fight him, you can see the end taking a snooze on his wheelchair. Well, actually he's undergoing photosynthesis because this is a Kojima game and he's weird like that. Anyways, after the cutscene is over, the players can just whip out their sniper rifle and pepper this old man with bullets, effectively killing him and bypassing an entire long boss fight later in the game. These types of opportunities for experimentation is what differentiates Metal Gear Solid 3 from AAA games that have come out before or since. Set in the backdrop of the Cold War, right off the heels of the Cuban Missile Crisis, our main character Snake... No. Not that one. Or that one. Who even is this one? It's can't be Snake. We're talking about the OG Snake, or as the game evocatively calls him, Naked Snake. <laughs> who was sent in to rescue a scientist that the US traded with the Soviet Union in exchange for Khrushchev and the Soviets to put their load and semen out of Cuba. Just think of it like a twisted political version of the NBA draft. Snake is sent into an area named the Virgin Cliffs to rescue this scientist. Which is kind of weird since I could have swore that they renamed the Virgin Cliffs to just the Cliffs after my last visit. Very weird. Anyways, Snake Haley jumps out of this airplane and onto Soviet land. Snake takes off his mask and... Jesus Christ, not you again. Get out of here. Just kidding, Snake takes off his pretty boy mask and officially commences the mission. What follows next is a melodramatic Cold War spy thriller that explores themes of patriotism, sacrifice, and existentialism. But this isn't a top 10 status video game stories video, so we'll ignore the story for now. Also, can we just take a step back and see the absolute physical torment the game inflicts on Snake throughout the story? Like this has gotta be a fetish or something. A common occurrence in these behind enemy line missions is that agents need to procure their own food and gear on site. Incredible. Sorry Snake, faulty technology hasn't been perfected yet, so no dropping in tanks and strippers. The player has to unlock new tools and weapons by picking them up throughout the game. Things like guns, ammo, STDs. Can't even eat a snake during a mission, huh? I wouldn't mind eating you can be picked up at various places. The player has to keep Snake's six-pack line tummy full over the course of the game to keep his stamina up, with stamina allowing Snake to recover health quicker, hang onto ledges, and climb ladders. Uh, trust me, don't run out of stamina climbing ladders, I assure you. You can either collect food from the enemy pantries, or you can hunt for it from the local flora and fauna. Food isn't only used for regaining stamina though, as you can use food to get into a lot of shenanigans that I'll get to later. <laughs> Hunting for food isn't the only mechanic that received a great deal of attention. The entire game is built around giving the players tons of stuff to lose themselves in. There is a deep camo system that for some reason hasn't been used in any game since, where you can blend in with your surroundings depending on your camo. Also, whenever Snake picks up a new piece of gear or camo, he can use his codec to call Sigint, 
Foxhound's resident gear expert, who will go into great detail about any weapon, gear, or camo that Snake picked up. Oh, so you thought there was going to be a joke here about Snake calling me while he has blackface camo? You know you are racist MF. Matter of fact, I should whoop your ass. Or Snake can call paramedic, a lady doctor that will tell Snake what food he should and shouldn't shove down his throat. Which always goes back to Snake asking if what he caught is tasty or not. Got it. By the way, you said they were known as a delicacy, right? There's also this part near the end of the game where Snake is joined by Eva. And you can use the health view to see her injury and food history. And you can see that she had a breast enlargement. I guess those decups didn't come easy. But now you can't talk about espionage without actually being in the middle of an enemy base. After Snake makes his way through the jungle, dodging booby traps along the way, both literal and figurative, there are a bunch of sections where Snake is in these big interiors, with actual civilization and electricity and computers and stuff which serve as a contrast to the lush and damp locales of the wilderness. These segments are where the game really shines. Whether you're disguising yourself as a scientist to get through a research base using fake cigars, or avoiding cars in the middle of a hangar, the game sells the witwork fantasy popularized by media like James Bond. There's even this part where you need to kidnap this general to steal his disguise and... Jesus Christ, not, not, not you again. Get out of here. A game filled with such iconic set pieces and scenarios is memorable, but none are more memorable than the game's boss fights. When Snake is not busy munching down on some snake that he hunted, getting publicly groped, or burning a hole through Eva's brazier with his eyes, the pair will eventually run into these weirdos known as the Cobra Unit, a legendary combat unit from the Second World War. Because what Nazi wouldn't surrender after getting hornets thrown at them or literal ghosts summoned to haunt them? If the gameplay and story were a kick, these boss battles would be the icing. These boss battles are insanely good. And on every replay, it's possible to find new ways to approach them. Is that dick good? Yes, kid. Take The Fear, for example, aka the average 23 year old working night shifts. He spends the entire boss fight jumping across trees while stalking you in his invisibility camo and attacking you with his crossbow. He can only use his invisibility clock for so long before needing to regenerate his stamina by hunting animals in the area and gobbling them up. Food. So, what the fear can do is throw a poison frog down and the fear will lap it right up poisoning him and damaging his health. Oh. Again, as I said before, the game has these approaches but the player isn't forced to use them, as the fear is also deathly allergic to bullets and enough magdams are enough to beat him. Now I could sit here for the next 30 minutes talking about all the insane details this game has and making about a dozen more jokes about Eva's chest rockets, but all you need to know is that this game is stacked with the love and dedication that the devs put into it. I only wish that modern AAA games would follow the same path as games like Metal Gear Solid 3 and the recent Baldur's Gate 3, giving players more options and not less. It really pains me when I see big, detailed open worlds like the ones in Red Dead Redemption 2 having these restrictive mission structures, while at the same time having this open world where you have the really interesting organic interactions that at the end don't really translate to the game's main mission structure all that much. It's important for game companies to look at what makes games an interactive medium, such as player agency and choice, and do away with restrictive game design. This approach is what gamers want and it will really enhance the gaming experience, much like how Eva enhanced her breasts.